I, I don't think I would, if I, if I was given the opportunity to change, I don't think I would change anything really. Um, because of course not everything, this doesn't mean that everything went perfectly, everything went my way, of course not. There were like um, really positive things, but also less positive. But I think that's kind of like what led me here. And because I'm happy where I am, like I don't think I would have changed anything because yeah, I think those, like everything I did, like just yeah, led me here. So yeah. <laughs> I should have explored more opportunities uh, internally. That's in my company, they actually offer a lot of opportunity, like a rotation role. But I was not really comfortable at stepping out of my comfort zone because I was like, okay, I was just in this company, I want to do my job well. And then, um, but I, I actually missed a lot of opportunities because I was a little bit scared to step out, step out of my comfort zone to just uh, to try to explore and then my potentials. I think, well, from my perspective, it, there's nothing to that I should have done differently. It's it's fine. Um, maybe I could have stayed long in Groningen because I really enjoyed my time. Um, I, I got to know a lot of people who did two master's degrees or just instead of doing your master's degree for a year, they took another exchange semester or they did an internship in between again. So they did it for one and a half years. I would have enjoyed doing that as well. Um, but I think it's fine. Um, I knew what I wanted before I came to Groningen. I knew that I really wanted a job after my studies. So I focused on studying and uh, getting good grades. <laughs> uh, looking back, I would have maybe tried to diversify it, uh, to diversify my, uh, let's say, experience portfolio a little yeah. bit more to, yeah. to, to understand more industries, more uh, verticals a bit more. Um, yeah, and I think specifically um, a career oriented when you're already in the job, um, I think generally speaking, um, it's, always, it's always good to really uh, take the lead for, for specific things for specific projects right away this is the way how you can uh, how you how you can really make an impact and um, and make it then also faster internally if you for example um, uh, have ambitions to to work in a different role or on a higher level for example no actually no I think um, it's tempting when you're a student it's tempting to think that you have there's a kind of a one efficient way to the top um, or to success or to happiness or anything you would like to aspire but I I don't think that's the case I think you you just choose and you find out and you choose again and and life just happens I guess when you have your first job to separate life and job um, because there are a lot of people that didn't handle that um, especially in, in my area mm -hmm. um, that I see that they just work they don't have a personal life anymore and of course they're fine with it because uh yeah once you get used to it that's just your life uh, during my bachelor's i was doing the uh, project with the uh, uh, shanghai students and afterwards uh, we went to uh, visit them and I was really amazed by the scale of how everything is done in uh, Shanghai. And then I also saw our uh, compar a comparative advantage to them. And then you actually know how you can work with them and what you can uh, bring to the table from your side and they can bring uh, the table on their side. My international experience that shaped me the most was my first semester abroad in my bachelor's. Um, I went to Latin America and I met a lot of new cool people from all around the world and it gave me it kind of like broadened my whole horizon like countries other cultures uh, learning a new language and traveling and that was really a time of my life where I still have friends with today in contact with seeing each other visiting each other and learning from each other and uh, following each other where everyone else is going working studying it's it's really great memories I think definitely my life in uh, in, in Groningen, which is really, really amazing because it offers a great opportunity for me to get to know people from all around Europe because of Erasmus Network. And then I think that helps me not only like academically, because I really learned a lot uh, studying in Ruch, 
professors amazing. I met uh, Dr. Hofstetter uh, once. I've always been admiring <laughs> him. And then uh, also uh, Dr. Feringa as well. Uh, at the time I was in Groningen, uh, he was awarded the Nobel Prize. So I was like, well, I got a really good chance. A uh, great opportunity to meet some of the best uh, in the industry. And also I met people. I think the people really the most valuable assets. Um, they have offered me so many, um, like the way I see things, they've offered me different so a perspective on the same things, people from different culture. That really helps me to open up my horizon. I can see things differently. I know the world is not black and white. It's so many times it's gray. It's not like that. So I think it's important uh, for me as a professional in my career. I can see things more objectively and that's been very subjectively and uh, I think it's really, really um, helpful because of my foreign experience, uh, life I had in crowding, yes. Um, so I think this would be my exchange um, during my bachelor's uh, to Taiwan. Um, this was the first time that I was living in a country that was very different from the Netherlands for a longer time. Um, so I never really realized how big the difference would be. And I think I was pretty much in, in a Taiwanese environment as well. So it was very, very different. And I heard a lot of people saying they didn't have a culture shock when they went on their exchange, but I definitely had one. And I think this also shaped the way I'm thinking about certain problems. So definitely that experience. Well, sometimes I do better than other times, but um, yeah, when I make long uh, days at work, I try to not to see it negatively because sometimes when I uh, stop working earlier and I, then I, in the evening, I still have the idea that I have to finish stuff. So then it's, it's just, it just feels better to complete the stuff uh, at work and go home a bit later. And uh, yeah, I try not to bother too much about that because you still have plenty of time in the weekends to do other things. And yeah, so it's going quite well, I think. Uh, in general terms, I don't really care uh, how much time I spend on uh, things that I like. So for example, I want to develop in a, a, a delivery lead and a agile uh, coach. Uh, I don't, and I don't really care how much time I do spend there. I, I can listen to the podcast. I can uh, study some uh, materials about this uh, domain uh, because it's my passion and I want to go, uh, grow there. But uh, for example, if I should do some uh, annoying things, I would really state my boundaries and I would uh, communicate them upfront to, for example, the, the, the company. Uh, I can give an example uh, like how I'm doing right now. In the beginning of my job life in the company, I was doing testing, which I didn't really like, but I want to get an experience. And nowadays they want me to do, to do still testing, but I limit myself to only, I can still do testing, but only really limited. And if you want me to be as a scrum master or the more agile person, then I don't mind to spend any time. So, and it's really working for me, so I can really limit myself doing uh, uh, things that I don't like and maximize the, the things that I do like. And of course, like in the beginning, it was 10% to 90, and now it's yeah. like going slowly back to 90 to 10. So you should just uh, step by step uh, set up your boundaries. Um, I would say with sleeping and sports, <laughs> I mean, every person is different, um, but for me, what worked very well was uh, trying to get enough sleep and uh, doing sport on a regular way. And on the weekends, I mostly use my time to travel because that's one of my favorite hobbies and try to meet friends uh, and socialize. So that was really useful. Um, I, I, I think actually, a work-life balance, so to say, doesn't exist. Uh, it's something I, uh, I, I really first thought about it when our former uh, VP of uh, marketing was uh, talking about her experience uh, with respect to that. And I, and I find it actually very interesting because, you know, if you think of a work-life balance, like work is part of your life. So um, I personally see it as, as, as a part of life and um, you need to manage it in the same way you manage your other uh, activities in life, uh, your hobbies, uh, 
your interactions with your family and friends, etc. Ideally, it is such an important and uh, joyful part of your life that you yep. do not really think about how you actually manage it. You know, it should be a natural part of it. And here, I think um, the big part of finding the right job comes into play. Um, if I actually look around at my friend circle and I see people talking about their work-life balance and that it's not really um, fruitful or something like that, most people are also not so really happy in their, in their roles. So, um, you know, it, try to find a role and a job that is really, um, that is really giving you personally an added value that where you can really have, where you really experience joy. And if you see that you're not happy there, but even if it's maybe a nice uh, company name or a nice role or even a super nice salary, but it doesn't make you happy, then maybe think if you're, if you're the right fit for that role. And if yeah. you, after a while of experiencing, maybe also consider to uh, move for, forward and, and find a new job. Um, I, I think it should never create a situation where you are, uh, where you're ending up in a burnout or something like this. I think there, there should be, uh, um, where should be red flags on that way that should ideally tell you, okay, maybe take a minute and really think of it if this is the right thing to do. And if you, if you have a job with uh, supporting colleagues, with, uh, with supporting company hierarchies, um, you know, you, sh you shouldn't actually think in the end of the day too much about it. And um, if you then answer an email, maybe after six o'clock, uh, it should be a normal thing. But on the other hand, uh, to take your own liberal time and, and, and be flexible in, in structuring your day should be also then just a no-brainer. It depends on if you, if you have like this, this pattern of nine to five and then you have your private life in the evening or you say, okay, well, there's some kind of mixture in the whole week. And I'm currently finding out that this mixture in the whole week actually works better than <laughs> trying to cramp things in nine to five and then having this private life at night or something like that. I'd say you have to be very consistent um, because as I mentioned earlier, usually um, companies will try to make you work longer or not actively tell you to work longer, but they will give you so much work that you can't do it in a normal day. Um, so at some point you really have to be consequent about it. You really have to say, okay, is it, is it worth it? Yes or no? Usually to be honest answers, no. Um, and you have to figure out, okay, um, it's, I work this time, I work it concentrated, I try different things to be productive, it doesn't work. Um, I will just go home when, I, let's say you are there at eight, it's five, in the afternoon now and you just say okay i just close my laptop and go home that's the only thing you can do it's it's tough in the beginning because you mm -hmm. think in the beginning you think that you're kind of betraying your employer he's giving you money and you're not doing your job but it's not mm -hmm. just you have to think about yourself um and you have to think about that you do give these eight hours every day and that should be enough mm -hmm.